Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Ruth Simon McRae, who's a textile designer and a columnist with Floor Focus Magazine. Ruth, you doing okay? I'm doing great. How are you, Kemp? I'm good. I know you just were out of the country. You went to the Brazilian Tile Show for us, and I know you're going to write an article in the next issue about that. But the reason I'm calling you today, you've just written an article in the March issue that is very interesting, and it's about the senior living area but it's about memory care and you know just on floor daily yesterday we ran a news story that was talking about how memory care is where most of the money is being invested when it comes to senior living facilities so this is definitely a topic that many people are interested in wouldn't you say yes i would i'm personally very interested in it as well my mother was in a nursing care facility where they had sort of a dementia ward yeah and i'm very interested as that place which is menorah park in beachwood ohio as they developed in the assisted living level new ways of caring um for people with dementia that just give them so much choice and preserve their personhood so much Mm -hmm. it's harder to do that in the in the skilled nursing area But that interested me in the area, and then when I started to research it, I got more and more fascinated. Yeah, so this is a great article. It's about a five-page article in our March issue. And you start out giving some statistics that I want to share with our listeners, Uh, and that is the number of people who suffer from dementia, one in nine over 65, and actually one in three over 85. So there's a lot of people in the senior living category that have memory issues, right? Yes, that's true. And also, if we look at the exploding senior population because of the baby boomers, the statistic is by 2025, there will be a 40% um, increase from today's numbers, just because there'll be more people. Mm -hmm. And so So it's going to touch all of us one way or another. Yeah. And floor covering, believe it or not, you can change the floor covering. Talk a little bit about what you learned about some of the architectural firms that are leaders in this area and what decisions they're making around floor covering what's so interesting is the commitment i mean the real passion that these architecture firms have for senior living as well as the administrators and and the people who run the facilities so that there are trends for example the greenhouse concept which says that people do better in smaller small what they call small houses which might be eight to ten small apartments it might be eight to ten small single rooms Mm -hmm. and then have an open public area, which has a living room and a dining room and all kinds of activity places. What's interesting to me is that, and I had the opportunity to go through this with some of the designers to actually look at the floor plan and see, you know, where you walk and what happens. They're so open, and the corridors have a vital function, which I'll get to in a minute. They're so open, and they have so much natural light. And the natural light, well, it affects the color palette, but what it really does is it helps the people living, the residents, it helps regulate their circadian rhythms so they feel better, just like um, when when you fly overseas and you try to get out in the sunshine to get regulated. It helps orient them to where they are. There's also um, a trend of having kind of semi-transparent boundaries throughout the space. So from the living room, you can see the dining area, and then you can see down the hall, so you don't feel closed in in any way. So that makes flooring choices really interesting, for one thing. You have to have floorings that are appropriate for each other and will butt up against each other without any transitions. They have to be home-like because, and, and let me mention that I'm talking about assisted living, which is where this real development is. It has to feel home-like from a color standpoint and a finish standpoint, even from the outside of the building. And at the same time, it has to function like you're in a nursing facility. So it has to be low and it has to be dense, has to be easy to clean with not too many types of cleaning. So those are some of the things that I learned. Yeah. So you have what normal people, I mean, you've written several articles about senior living, and in the past you've covered these areas around, you know, incontinence issues, acoustic issues, slip resistance, and, you know, yellow tinting of the lens of a, an elderly person. You, you cover all that, but then in addition to this, there's wayfinding and making them feel like they're in a calming and cozy environments. So all these things that these designers are taking into effect, right? That's true. Um, The person with dementia feels overwhelmed by too many choices. So often the corridors will look into different activity rooms. 
and a person can wander down the corridor, and there'll be wayfinding cues as well so they can find their way back, but then kind of sample different activities and try out different groups without being, you know, slapped in the face with it or without having to make a big commitment. Mm -hmm. There's also things like cues, like as you go through the country kitchen, they'll have a bowl of fruit, and that will remind the resident that that's a place to eat, and maybe they want a snack. You know, we've been talking about the physical properties. Talk about some of the economic decisions that have to be made in these senior living facilities. Well, Camp, as you mentioned, there's a huge trend. The biggest trend in senior housing now is towards building these specialized units or freestanding buildings. The reason is because they're private pay. Well, there's two reasons. One reason is that there's the need, there's the growing need, and there are people on waiting lists for these places. But also because they're private pay, they help fund the facilities other areas. For example, going back to Menorah Park, they have 350 plus beds in their nursing care, and 80% of those people are on Medicaid or have some kind of Medicaid supplement, and they're losing $8 million a year. Well, they're able to make up some of that money by having the, pro the private pay um, memory care unit, along with other assisted living and independent living areas that they have. So it's really important just for our society as we try to figure out, you know, how are we all going to pay for this for our old age to have a balance of the money coming in? And the, and the property manager certainly understand that. All right. Well, it's a great article. I wanted to make sure we drew attention to it. Again, it's in the March issue. It's not only about senior living, but it's around this new topic of memory care. Again, been talking to Ruth McCray, a textile designer and one of our columnists at Floor Focus. And you've been listening to Kemp Har and Floridelli.net.